actually went on the open call auditions in New York and, um, but I had no idea that they had already seen my tape and um, they had, they knew who I was or knew that I was this girl from Long Island. And yeah, it was, it was a magical experience. It truly was. It was, I mean, it was my senior year of high school too. And I was getting ready, like everybody we were all getting ready to graduate and like go on to our own paths. And I had no idea that this was my, my future. How was the, so you sent it in, it was ignored. Like what happened on the audition? Like you show up and I imagine, I mean, like, was it a line or is it like you have an audition time? How does that work? Uh, well, there was, I remember there being a massive line. Like there's actually, there's a behind the scenes of the search for Tracy. I think it's on the DVD extras and they show the line in New York City. I mean, you could wrap around Times Square like a couple, it was insane, insane. So many girls auditioning. And when I found out, cause they did after Adam Shankman, our director told us like, look, I, I did. Uh, international search he's like we went to every English speaking country he's like I was like well how many girls exactly did you see like I was just curious he said I saw over 7,000 girls and I was like what and you picked wow. me and he still tells me this day he was like yep it was the girl in the green shirt and yeah that was me I was the girl in the green shirt so you show up, there's a long line. Now it's kind of your first, one of your first auditions. I mean, other than you just stand there and wait, you don't say like, I'm going to wait, but what's the point of this? Like, there's no chance. No, I just, I had, I just remember having such hope and faith and my mom was with me. So it was like, my mom totally believed that I could do this. You know, it's like when you have the support of a parent and like somebody who's, you know, literally it's their job to guide you through life. And they're telling you, you can do anything you put your mind to. If you want to audition for this movie, go for it. Like I definitely would not have been able to do it without the guidance and support of my parents. Like, because most people, when they hear your kid wants to be an actor, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. But my parents were like, go. They, they were like, experience it, you know, whatever you want to be. They were happy if I wanted to be an actor, if I wanted to become a nurse or a psychologist, whatever. Like, if, as long as it was fueling my passion. And my mom just saw at those auditions, I was just living my best life and just having the best time. Well, honey, I am a nice Jewish girl from Connecticut, and my parents were like, box A is law school, hence Hofstra Law School. Box yeah. B is med school. And box C is you can pay for your own college or <laughs> whatever you want. But there's yeah. med school or law school, so you figure that out, sweetheart, and get back to us. You go left or right. And yes. Exactly. So if I told my parents I wanted to be an actor, yes, they would have... I don't know what would have happened. Now, obviously, <laughs> I do as I please, but it was a roundabout way. So I support anyone's parents that, you know, support them for the arts. Did your mother go on the audition with you? Yeah, my mom, she came to the audition right with me. And she was there for filming because um, I was 17 when we started filming Hairspray. So I was technically still a minor and my mom you know I needed a legal guardian and she came with me but I remember they said to me well on my 18th birthday they said your mom can go home now I said no she can't I said she's not going anywhere <laughs> I was like you're seeing me through this mom we're finishing this movie together my mom was there every single day on set um wow and what's great about my mom is she's not a set mom like she's not like you know a momager she would just hang in the back you know, with the dancers. And then we went on a world tour together and released the movie and she came with me. And that was like the coolest experience to go see the world now with my mom. So backing up, so you, you're in the line, she's there, you finally get to your turn. And then what, like you audition and you... I remember I was seeing the same faces. I got to know the casting directors, David Rubin and Richard Hicks. I'll never forget. Um, and I, I noticed I was seeing them at every, you know, callback. I got a callback and then I got another callback and I just kept. So after a couple of callbacks, then it got down to the callbacks in Baltimore. 
and they called a bunch of girls to a dance audition. I had no idea it was a dance audition. I'm not a dancer. I never danced a day in my life before Hairspray. And, and how many people at this point, was it like you were now down to like the top 50, the top 10? Just curious. In this group of girls, it, I think there was like, I think there was like seven or eight of us at this point. Like they were just, they had, were just seeing a certain amount of us at a time. So I don't know how right. many girls it was down to, but it was definitely like the top 20 at this point. And huh. then I made it to the top four. It was the, um, the, the final big screen test out here in LA. And um, I remember they called me and they said, you got a screen test. We're going to fly you to LA. And I was like, what? Like, I couldn't, they said, you made it to the top four. There's four of you, four final girls. And um, I came out here. They put me in full Tracy hair and makeup. They cut my hair. I remember just like, I was just having the best time. They were like, can we tweeze your eyebrows? Can we cut your hair? I said, do whatever you want. I just, I was having such an amazing time. Got out on the sound stage, did the big screen test in front of the producers, the director, choreographer. And I just remember just literally, I, I had a feeling when I just, let it all out. I just let it all go. I let it all on the, I left it all on that sound stage, And I said, there's nothing else I could do from here on out. Like I performed, I did everything. And I came back home to Long Island and I waited and I waited and I waited. And then they called every time a 310 number from California would call, like I would be fumbling my cell phone and we picked it up and they said, we want to do a behind the scenes with each of the four final girls. This was, this was a lie. I had no idea that they had decided it was me at this point. And they said, we want to get behind the scenes footage. They said, so for you, we'd like to come to your job. I was working at a Cold Stone Creamery, an ice cream store at the time. And they said, so we'd like to get footage of you in your natural environment. I said, well, come on down. So they came to Long Island. They sent a camera crew. And that's the tape that ended up making it onto the internet of they came to my job and the night before my senior prom told me that I, it was me.